All right, YouTubers, I recently did a video where I did a tour of somebody's Class B Plus uh, Coach House Platinum, and it was really nice. And it got me thinking, well, you know, one day I might buy a different RV. So I was, I was snooping around, getting down the wormhole that is the internet, and I was looking at more true Class Bs, you know, vans. And I've come to a conclusion that I think a lot of people might be 50-50. It might split the RV Class B community. Um, I don't like the new ones. <laughs> um, I went online and I put a bunch of pictures and I'm going to show you of the real Class Bs, you know, standard on a van Class Bs that are made today. Not all of them, but the majority of them. And they're different now. Well, they've been different for a while. I think, again, personal opinion, if you watch this and you have one of these that I mentioned, I'm not taking a personal affront to you. I'm giving an opinion of my own. All right. So that being said, where this will split the Class B community, um, I have a 99 Leisure Travel. I'll show you a couple pictures of it that I'll compare to what I'm going to show you of the brand new ones. And I think the problem became not really their fault. It's the fault of Dodge and to a lesser degree, Chevy and Ford. Dodge stopped making the 3500 van. And that's what the majority of Class Bs were made on. And now everything's made on the Sprinter, the Ford Transit, or the Promaster by Dodge. And again, personally, I don't like them. <laughs> they're, compared even to mine, they're a lot skinnier. They're not as wide. Um, they do have some benefits. They tend to have a little bit more windows in the newer ones. And of course, the argument you can never get away from is, or the argument point, whatever you want to call it, the new tech is cool. You know, one of the things I would love to do with this if I ever save up the money is a lot of the new Class Bs do the deal where they put a second alternator under the hood and they load them down with batteries so that you can you can have a lot of power, enough to run air conditioners, a lot of onboard power when you don't have the ability to plug in. Um, I think that's awesome. Overall, to me, very few of them are not made on those new chassis. And they tend to be bigger. And in some ways, that's good. But the layout being skinnier, not as wide, whatever you want to call them, they tend to have a little different layout than the older late 90s models and into the early 2000s. Okay, this is gonna go fast, maybe too fast. Now we'll look at RVs, my 99 Leisure Travel wide body with different ways I've been able to set up the bed, inside and outside, which I'm not gonna show in this, some really great storage, in my opinion, much better than some of the new ones. And again, the main thing that bothers me about the new ones is the pricing, but let's leave this and go to a new one. This is an Airstream Atlas and they're like $250,000. They might not be a true class B. This is an Airstream Tommy Bahama and these are $200,000. They're very sleek and airplane-like, but I think they're a lot different than class Bs that used to be on a van. This is a Coachman Beyond and they're at least $100,000. Again, a different kind of layout than the older ones. And I've admitted, maybe my problem is I just like the older ones. This one is a Coachman Galleria. They're $150,000. Again, nice. And I'm going through these slides pretty quick. But I'm just showing you that, first and foremost, the pricing is what gets you. This is a Coachman Nova. They're around $120,000. And they all have the same kind of airplane look inside. Here's a cheaper one. This is a Pleasureway Torfino. They have the pop-up top. But... They're still $70,000, and in my opinion, they're kind of um, sparse. I guess maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Here's a Winnebago Revel, very, very popular. They run $125,000 to $180,000. With these, I'll admit they do something mine can never do. They have pretty good off-road capabilities. But again, the pricing is just insane. Here's a Winnebago Travato. They start at least $100,000. Here's a Winnebago Bolt. They run from $185,000 to $225,000. Again, very nice, but 
I don't think Class B manufacturers are looking for real people anymore. Here's a Winnebago era, $125,000. I just wonder what market they're going to. A lot of people can't afford these. A Winnebago Solis, they're $125,000. They also do the pop-up scheme. Here's a Thor Tolero, they're eighty dollars to $120,000. So I've concentrated on price, but it gets me back to my point is, used might be the way for a lot of people to go. Back to the ramble. So that was some pictures of new ones and I glossed over them real. If you're looking at buying brand new, there's some ideas for you to check prices, but as you can tell, new Class B prices are insane. And they're insane because people pay it. I think obviously the best value you can find is a used one. And now something like mine, you know, it's getting old enough to where a lot of people are afraid of something that old. So uh, again, if you put the money in it and you take care of it, they can last a really long time. And I, again, I would choose this over the brand new ones. I would love to have the tech of the new ones. If you have enough money, anything's doable. I mean, I bought this seven years ago, I think now. I might be losing track. It's seven or eight. I don't know. Um, and I got it for 15 grand. And now I could sell this probably with no difficulty at all at 25, probably 30 grand. Because as I just showed you, the prices of the brand new ones are insane. So say you looked at something like this and you just liked this better than the new, you know, Sprinters and Promasters and Transits. Say that's what you wanted. Well, you're going to get it cheaper. If you put five or ten grand into it, under the hood, you know, wheels up kind of thing if you're worried about that stuff, I think you could have a better RV. And again, if I had the money, maybe I would buy a new Class B, but I know I'm not spending $200,000 on one. 20 grand of upgrades would make this amazing. I think if I was buying new, I would be looking at a Class C, a small Class C, which aren't built as well, for the most part. Again, I'm not insulting anybody out there for what you may have. But Class Bs tend to be built, built very well, and that adds a little bit to why they're priced so high. But if you're talking just dollars and cents and what makes sense, a newer small Class C might be the way to go. And my favorite Class Bs are this one, are the Leisure Travels. But the problem I have with Leisure Travel right now, and it's not a problem, it's just where they saw the market go, is they don't make Class Bs anymore. They try to still say they do, but officially everything listed that they sell is a small C, is has to be considered a Class C. They're huge. If I won the lottery, I'd definitely get a Unity by Leisure Travel, or they could give me one for all the nice things I've always said. And the options of an actual van-based Class B are pretty limited, and... You know, it you it might be getting to the point where it makes sense to build out your own. But don't ever think that's not going to run a lot of money because all the pieces, parts that you see, <laughs> those, those cost a lot of money. They are not cheap. So that was my little, I like to call them rambles because I'm not angry and I don't tend to do rants, in my opinion. But maybe I'm a little too old school and I'm not going along with the changes, you know. I, w I sure wish Dodge still made the 3500 van, and I sure wish you could buy something new like this. Um, I don't know the current status of Road Trek. I know they had a lot of problems, um, a lot of corporate stuff. They went out of business. Somebody else bought them. There's been problems. Again, not insulting anybody. I never really was a big fan of the Road Treks. I always thought, to me, it was Leisure Travel and Pleasure Ways were my favorite van based real van class b's <laughs> old school class b's and a lot of people look at the class b's and i get in this conversation a lot i can get 15 miles a gallon if i stick to around 62 64 that tends to be my sweet spot in the gearing of this and i can get 15 miles to the gallon if i do 75 my gas mileage is terrible 
but a lot of people will want to get a diesel in the vans and they're like, oh, I get 22 miles a gallon. Well, go to the gas station and look at the difference in price from gas and diesel. Usually it's 50, 60, 70 cents more per gallon to buy diesel in America. I think some places it's not the same, some other countries. But so then you got to look at your total cost to own. It's being much higher. Your price per mile is probably higher. And then usually if you're getting a diesel, you're dealing with Mercedes, which makes a good product, but expensive if you ever need to take it into a shop. So if I was in a situation that some people are where they just wanted a new one, I'd have to learn to like the Sprinter style thing. I just would have to learn that. But I still think I would I would go towards the Dodge or the Ford personally and, and not do the Mercedes diesel. I know there's a lot of people that are very happy with theirs and probably a lot of people that have never had any problems. You know, you hear the horror stories about dealing with Mercedes work being done. But I think I would stick to gas. I think it in the long run it would be cheaper. And I'm just grateful all the time that I bought mine when I did. And to those of you that are similar to me, that you have the same feeling that you like the old school vans a little bit better, you can still find good ones out there. You're going to pay a little bit more than you might like, but it's still going to be far mm -hmm. superior than some of the prices mm -hmm. I just shown in this video. That was my ramble. Again, it's a ramble because it's not a rant. Because, you know, Everybody makes all these videos and they show every aspect of their RV and most everybody really likes their RV. So that's that about this old school versus new school class B kind of ramble. Um, whatever you like, you like that with no apologies, you know. Um, if you like all the new tech and stuff like that, then you get that. I just, I'm just personally a fan of the old school ones. And I, again, I am just so grateful that I was able to find mine when I did. And I would be terrified if I wanted to go out and buy a brand new Class B right now. Because when you look about the cheapest Class B you can find now is about 70 grand. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And to me, they're, they're, I, I, I wouldn't want that. <laughs> Old school, new school, whatever you like. Put gas in it. If you want diesel, put diesel in it. Turn the key and go find some beautiful places to go explore or go park in a city if that's what you want. But uh, get out there and search and find the thing that will best suit you. I guess this video is kind of geared towards people that might be looking. And I will repeat the advice I've given on pretty much any video that I talk about this topic. See as many as you can. Don't take your checkbook at first. Don't get overly excited at first because choosing the right RV for you is going to be awesome. Choosing the wrong RV for you will be terrible. And I call those things driveway art because there's a lot of people that go out and spend a lot of money thinking they want to do something and it becomes driveway art. And when you buy driveway art, I might be the guy coming in a few years and getting a really good deal on something that's sat in your driveway or somebody like me, because again, I don't want to trade this in. I want to keep this. So I hope that was helpful. Hope that was whatever it was. I at least hope you enjoyed and that you have a great and wonderful day. I know I only skimmed the surface, but maybe I gave you some useful points to ponder.